Hello! In this video, we will discuss the process of jugular venipuncture. Venipuncture, the drawing of blood from a vein, can be done using a number of veins on the dog. Previously, we have discussed drawing of blood from the cephalic vein. In this video, we're going to describe drawing of blood from the jugular vein, which lives in a furrow on the dog's neck between the trachea, or windpipe, and the shoulder. In dogs that are multiple colors, this vein most commonly can be found where there is a shift in color. So as we can see on this dog, where the fur goes from white to orange would be the perfect place to be looking for the vein. There are nine steps to performing jugular venipuncture. The first step is after asking the handler to appropriately restrain the dog, to locate the jugular furrow and occlude the jugular vein near the thoracic inlet to visually assess and palpate the vein. The second step is to wet the venipuncture site with alcohol. In dogs with really long hair, sometimes you'll need to clip hair from the venipuncture site in order to see the vein. Oftentimes, however, just applying and releasing pressure to the jugular furrow will be enough to cause it to stand up. Step three, you'll choose an appropriate size needle and syringe and inspect them for flaws. In step four, we want to move the plunger back and forth to break the seal on the syringe and also to break the cap loose on the needle. Step 5. Reocclude the chosen jugular vein with the fingers or thumb of the non-dominant hand on the lower neck near the thoracic inlet. You may have to give instructions for manipulation of the head to achieve best visualization of the vessel. Step 6. While holding the syringe barrel, insert the needle, bevel up, at a 15 to 30 degree angle to the neck through the skin. In Step 7. Keeping the barrel of the syringe stabilized, Aspirate blood into the syringe by gently withdrawing the plunger. Step 8. Release pressure on the jugular furrow with the non-dominant hand. And then step 9. Take that hand and apply pressure over the venipuncture site as the needle is removed. We will now go through each of these steps individually. Remember, step 0 is going to be to ask the handler to appropriately restrain the dog. So we can see that the handler is grasping the dog under both sides of the chin and lifting the neck up in order to expose the neck, as we can see here and here. She's got the dog's back pushed against her chest in order to keep her from jumping off of the table, and she is making sure to have the dog at appropriate height for the person performing the venipuncture. We do always want to remember safety first, so if there's any question about whether a dog might be nippy or unstable, we want to go ahead and apply a muzzle, if we have a large dog and they're flopping about a bit, we want to make sure to move to the ground so that they're not going to knock someone off balance if they jump. Step one, locate the jugular furrow, which lies right here along the change in color in fur, and then occlude the vein near the thoracic inlet, which is going to be right above the shoulder, to visually assess and palpate the vein. So if we watch, we're going to go ahead and apply pressure there at the bottom of the jugular furrow where the, the shoulder is, and then feel along at that color change location for the presence of the vein, which will feel a little bit like a hose or a twizzler uh, running under the skin. If we watch closely as she releases pressure, we're going to see the vein deflate right here at the end of this video. Whoop, there it goes, whoop, right there. And as you could see, that movement occurred right there in the break point between the colors of fur. In step two, we're going to wet the venipuncture site with alcohol. If there was difficulty in seeing the vessel with repeated applying pressure and releasing pressure at the jugular furrow, you can go ahead and clip hair from the venipuncture site to make sure that you can see what you're doing. In step three, we're going to choose an appropriate size needle and syringe and inspect for flaws. For jugular venipuncture, the appropriate syringe is going to be either a 3 or 6 cc syringe, and usually a 20 gauge needle, like this, would be used, although sometimes in smaller animals a 22 gauge needle might be used instead. Shanna's breaking the case on the syringe, so she can expect for defects, and she also went ahead and broke the seal as part of that process. She's checking again and making sure there's good motion of the plunger, and she's going to go ahead and release the cap, which takes us to step four, which again is going to be moving the plunger back and forth to break the seal and make sure there's free action of the plunger 
and also to break the cap loose on that needle because otherwise it can be really hard to get it off when you are uh, ready to use the syringe. So you can see her breaking that and then setting it aside carefully so it will be ready when she is ready to draw the blood. Step five, reocclude the jugular vein with the fingers or thumb of the non-dominant hand on the lower neck near the thoracic inlet. So you can see her doing that right here and then she's feeling to make sure that that vessel is popping right back up where she can see it well. If you don't see the vessel well, you can give the handler instructions to manipulate the head to best visualize the vessel. Sometimes the chin needs to be lowered just a little bit because there's too much tension on the vessel and it's causing it to lie really flat. Sometimes if the dog's head has turned to the side, so he's trying to look to one side or the other, then rearrangement of the head so that the dog is looking sort of straight forward and up will bring the vessel into greater view. Step six, holding the syringe barrel, insert the needle bevel or slanty side up at a 15 to 30 degree angle to the neck through the skin. So you can see she's holding the barrel here. The bevel is aimed a little that way, and so you can see the slanty side is up. She's going in at a 15 to 30 degree angle to the skin. Then, while keeping the syringe stabilized, we aspirate blood into the syringe by gently withdrawing the plunger. Step eight and nine occur pretty simultaneously, so we're gonna watch closely for both of them in the same video. Step eight is to release occlusion on the vessel down here with the non-dominant hand, in this case the left thumb, prior to needle removal. We're decreasing pressure in the vein before we pull the needle out. And so we'll watch that part happen really quickly. Boop, and then Step nine is to apply pressure over the venipuncture site with that same thumb or finger as the needle is removed. So if we watch closely, eight and nine occur really fast together. That's it, those are all of the steps of jugular venipuncture. Let's review them one more time. Step one, locate the jugular furrow and occlude the vein near the thoracic inlet to visually assess and palpate the vessel. Step two, wet the venipuncture site with alcohol. Clip hair from the venipuncture site if necessary to see the vein. Usually it's just repeated applying and releasing of pressure with the thumb in the jugular furrow will cause you to identify movement of the vessel with deflation and inflation, allowing you to identify its location. When in doubt, if the animal has multiple colors of fur, always look where the fur changes color. Step three, choose the appropriate size needle and syringe and inspect for flaws. Again, for jugular venipuncture, usually we're going to want either a three or six cc syringe and a 20 gauge or occasionally a 22 gauge needle. Step four, move the plunger back and forth to break the seal on the syringe and at the same time, go ahead and break the seal on the needle cap. Step five, reocclude the chosen jugular vein with the fingers or thumb of non-dominant hand on the lower neck near the thoracic inlet. If the vessel is not standing up where you can see it very clearly or feel it very clearly, give the handler instructions to manipulate the head for best visualization. This may involve having the dog's nose brought more back towards central if it's looking to one side or the other, and if the nose is pointed too far up towards the ceiling, lowering it just a little bit. Step six, holding the syringe barrel with the dominant hand Insert the needle, bevel or slanty side up at a 15 to 30 degree angle to the neck through the skin. Step seven, keeping the barrel of the syringe stabilized, aspirate blood into the syringe by gently withdrawing the plunger. You'll note that this was done without moving Shanna's hand. Instead of rearranging her hand on the syringe once the needle was in the neck, she used the back finger, so her little two fingers on her hand to do the aspiration of the plunger. Step eight, release occlusion on the vessel prior to needle removal, and then take those fingers of the non-dominant hand that were occluding the vessel and instead use them to apply pressure at the venipuncture site as the needle is removed. Now it's your turn. 